What's up everyone, my name is Kashi and welcome to the first episode of a series that I'm going to be calling Ignition and Beyond, where I take a look at the science and engineering behind all things automotive. Now the first collection of videos are going to be about engine basics. Now your engine needs three things to run, air, fuel, and a spark. And today I'm going to be talking about the first of those three and explore how an air intake system gets the air from the outside atmosphere to inside your engine. Let's do this. So keep in mind that for this video, we're only going to talk about naturally aspirated engines, but don't worry, we'll get into forced induction in the future. So the first step in an air intake system is for air to enter through an air inlet and then pass through a hose. In the case of the second generation Kia Rondo, your air inlet is positioned right here, just above your grill, and your hose continues around your battery. After passing through your hose, your air enters your air box. Inside your air box sits your air filter, which would look something like this. As air passes through your filter, it cleans it, removing any dirt, debris, leaves, anything that you don't want to get into your engine. Unfortunately, over time, dirt can build up and clog your filter, restricting your airflow. Because it would be more difficult for air to penetrate through a clogged filter, this would reduce your throttle response, acceleration, and the overall performance of your engine. In order to prevent this, it is recommended you change your air filter every 20 to 25,000 kilometers as regular maintenance. Now this is probably one of the simplest things that you can do to your car. You just unscrew your hose clamp, undo these pegs holding down your air box, remove your air box, take out your old filter and drop in your new one. It's a very simple process. Anyone can do it and it's a great way to keep your engine running smoothly. After air has been cleaned by your air filter, it travels down this hose and into your throttle body. Your throttle body gets its name because it's electronically connected to your throttle pedal or as some call it, your accelerator. And its function is to control the amount of air entering your engine. So here we have an image of a Skunk 2 Racing Performance Throttle Body. And as you can see, we have a gold colored valve that can open or close to allow more or less air to enter your engine. So let's say you want to accelerate hard, so you slam your foot down on the gas. Well, in order to go faster, you're going to need to make more power. And in order to make more power, your engine needs to burn more air and more fuel. So if you accelerated hard, your throttle body would open up the whole way allowing the maximum possible amount of air to pass through and enter your engine, giving you the power and speed that you desire. But let's say your car is at an idle. Well, now you barely need any power at all because your car is at a standstill. So, your throttle body would remain almost completely closed, allowing the minimum possible amount of air to pass through, just enough to keep your engine from stalling out. Your throttle body knows when to open and close because it is connected to your ECU or engine control units. The ECU is basically the computer which controls all of your car's electronic and sensory functions. And speaking of sensors, that brings us to the next step in our air intake system, your MAP sensor, which is located right down here. Your MAP or MAP sensor stands for Manifold Absolute Pressure. However, they are commonly found on older cars like the second gen Kia Rondo. Newer cars often have an MAF or MAF sensor instead. Whereas the MAP sensor is located after your throttle body, the MAF sensor is usually located right after your airbox. However, they both do very similar functions. They monitor the amount of air flowing past it and entering your engine. But why is this important? Well, for your engine to run efficiently, its ideal air to fuel ratio would be 14.7 parts air to every one part of fuel. Let's say your engine uses more air and less fuel, say a ratio of 15.2 parts air to every one part of fuel. 
This is called a lean air to fuel ratio or a lean mixture. If you use less air and more fuel, say a ratio of 13.7 to 1, this is called a rich air to fuel mixture because it is more rich in fuel. However, for an engine to run, its air to fuel ratio has to be somewhere between 12 to 1 and 16 to 1. These are your limits. So say you're running an extremely lean air to fuel ratio, say 20 to 1. Well, one of three things would happen. One, your engine would not run at all. Two, your engine would run but would be severely damaged. Or three, because you have so little fuel and fuel acts as a lubricant, you would have so much friction and so much heat that your engine would straight up explode. So, your MAP or MAF sensor will calculate the amount of air flowing past it and send that information to your ECU, which as I said before is your car's computer. Then, your ECU will add just the right amount of fuel to compensate for the amount of air entering your engine in order to achieve an air to fuel ratio as close to 14.7 to 1 as it possibly can. Alright y'all, we're at the last stage of your intake system, your intake manifold. So after your air has been cleaned by your air filter, gone past your throttle body, and has been monitored by either your MAP or MAF sensor, it enters the bottom chamber of your intake manifold called your intake plenum, and then travels up each of these individual runners and finally into your engine. So in the case of this Kia Rondo, we have an inline 4, so as you can see, we got 1, 2, 3, 4 intake runners. If this was an inline 5, say an Audi Quattro S1, then we would have 5 intake runners. And if this was an inline 6, like a Toyota Supra 2JZ, we would have 6 intake runners. In the case of a V alignment engine, like a V6 or a V8, you would either have one of two possibilities. One, you would have a dual plane manifold with two intake plenums, one on either side. Or, you would have one big manifold sitting in the middle in the case of a single plane manifold. And there you go, that is a complete guide to how your air intake system works. So you got your air inlet, your piping, air box, air filter, throttle body, map or MAF sensor depending on what car you have, and finally your intake manifold. So in the next video, I'm going to be explaining about some common modifications that people do to upgrade their stock air intake system, including cold air intakes and higher flowing throttle bodies. And after that, I'm going to be talking about the other two things your engine needs to run, fuel and a spark. So I hope you guys found this video interesting, enjoyable, useful, and knowledgeable. If I made any mistakes in any of my information or I left out something important, feel free to drop a comment below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.